Today, the song that I'm listening to is by U2. This was suggested to me on my patron-only vote. Wow. We do it once a week, and it's loads of fun, and we all send suggestions and then vote on it. And, yeah, that's how a vote works. And this one has a really interesting history and a really interesting story as to why it was written and how it was written, and it's become a really iconic song. So let's give it a listen. So we're looking for a million Americans to email us to join the One campaign. I'm not looking for your money, I'm looking for your voice. You know what? There is something before this awesome riff. I really like this. Um, there's something really interesting about Bono's voice in that he manages to maintain diction without making anything choppy. He has such smoothness to his tone. And if we're being really technical, what that comes from is full chord closure. His vocal cords are closing fully. Now, it can be quite hard as singers to feel that because, you know, like... Who can go, oh, I'm closing my vocal cords. But what we can feel is whether it's oh, really breathy or whether we're getting tone and there can be too much chord closure where they're pressing really tightly together and it feels really squeezed. So if it feels squeezed, you're probably using a bit too much chord closure. If it feels like the air just leaves, there's like not any resistance at all, oh, then yep, you, you probably aren't getting enough chord closure um, and when you're in like a really efficient in the middle place and you've got a lot of balance between your breath and the shapes that you're making with your mouth and your tongue and everything, then hopefully this chord closure should fall into place. And it sometimes takes a bit of time to find this, but um, if you're singing this place, it's actually a really healthy place to sing in because it's just really, really efficient. His consonants are so soft. Really quick. So it's really interesting because consonants, by being consonants, they stop your airflow. So they can be a bit of a pain in the backside. Um, they just get in the way of that sound. And um, that is a good thing because it becomes the percussion in the song. But in this case, he's using really light consonants. So instead of getting his tongue right to the top of his mouth for like a l, I think he said alive or something, live, um, he just doesn't quite get his tongue there. La. Um, I, I'm so used to doing it that I just need to go there. But um, that allows that airflow to continue through rather than blocking off the airflow. Now, it isn't something that I would always recommend. Um, sometimes it means that you lose the clarity of the consonants. It seems to be working quite well for him, um, but it really depends on the individual. And um, you will have to discover for yourself and find in your own taste whether it's working for you too. Have you come? 
dancing with me. I hope you dance with me in all of these videos. Mm. Oh, he's changing a lot of his vowels in this higher part of his range, which is really a clever thing to do and a lot of singers will do this so for example on the word love um he's making it almost like a u an uh sound sometimes you'll hear singers change it to love and makes it a little bit brighter that uh sound often maintains the warmth a little bit more it keeps you love instead of love it's that a little bit brighter love um and i heard there he did more something else into an ah uh, then Oh, there we go. I'll, I can't be holding on instead of on, which was, it depends on your accent. Like I would say on, which is quite round. Maybe some American accents are more of an on. Um, so it depends on your accent, but he is it Irish. Who knows? Um, it is helpful. <laughs> He's adding that uh in there again. That uh sound. So this has become a really special song both for you too and I think the world in general and it was written at Hansa Studios in Berlin which is a really famous studio and they're really important studios because it's where Bowie um, wrote Heroes and that was during before the, um, the fall of the Berlin Wall. Now this was written after the fall of the Berlin Wall and they went there to um, try and get some of that spirit of the reunification and found that the place felt quite bleak and they started arguing a lot and um, the whole band became close to splitting up and then they started to write this song. It took a little moment but once they started writing those lyrics suddenly the whole thing they wrote it all in 15 minutes and they knew that it was going to be a special song and they knew it was going to be a big hit for them um and you know it's inspired by that reunification of them and the whole german reunification so it's a beautiful song with a beautiful inspiration and um i love that idea i feel like it's really interesting i don't know if any of you guys do any songwriting but certainly if i've written a song sometimes it can be like wading through sludge and then every now and again it just flows and then bam that song is done super quickly so it's really fun how music kind of just i mean what the quote is is that it just fell from the sky and i understand that feeling sometimes it just comes to you and sometimes it does not
So why would an artist use an A rather than an E or an U? Um, you hear a lot of the time people using as, sometimes U's but in a different context. And it's interesting, as sounds more like screams or shouts, ah, it's a big emotional sound. Also, it's just easier. Like, you don't scream on an E, you know? And if you do, it feels, sounds really tight. So if you're like, E, it has that brighter sound. Actually, it kind of makes me feel like it'd be a nice sunny sort of song, but it doesn't directly connect to that kind of um, primal calling thing that you get when you're doing an ah, an ooh. Ooh, because of that kind of closed nature feels to me a little bit more placed. I don't know what you guys think, but there is definite feelings to different vowels and they have different emotional, um, different emotional, I don't know, express different emotions is what I need to say. <laughs> Oh, there's an O as well. It's fun to look at iconic songs like this for me, songs that I know quite well that um, that I haven't really listened to it with my like singing teacher ear or with great interest and doing that research was really really fascinating for me. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, if you did please do like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!